Hi, I'm Bill Wilt of Assured Research. Thanks so much for joining this quick hit video. Uh, described as quick hit because uh, we're going to cover one topic. It's drawn from our March 2024 Assured Briefing. Uh, and in that briefing, uh, our research notes focused on topics that we pulled out of the fourth quarter 2023 earnings calls, which were, of course, relevant for the fourth quarter and for 2023, but, but most importantly, topics that we think will uh, continue to uh, be prominent in 2024 and into 2025. Uh, if you're a subscriber, thank you, and we hope this supplements your understanding of uh, what you may have already read. If you are not a subscriber and you're here out of interest, thank you. Uh, feel free to look at the other videos on uh, this YouTube site. Um, look at our uh, corporate website and uh, where you can learn more about what we, uh, the research content that we produce. Um, and in the end, we'd be happy to uh, add you to a trial to our work if you're so inclined. So let's get into this, uh, this topic, which is focused on the Insure Act, uh, homeowners insurance. There we go. So homeowners insurance um, and the Insure Act, which was proposed in early January by Representative Adam Schiff of California. Um, California, not surprising, and probably frankly, none of none of the uh, the, the catalyst for the proposed Insure Act uh, will be surprising when I say that it's really because of the disrupted homeowners markets uh, that are uh, uh, really kind of across. Uh, across the country and in some some large and populous states. Um, California and Florida would be exhibits A and B for sure. Uh, they've gotten the attention of politicians um, and have uh, catalyzed them to uh, begin taking actions. Um, I'll share on the topic of, of homeowners that we released an assured comment in mid-January focused on the North Carolina Rating Bureau's proposed 42% homeowners rate increase in that state. Um, when we looked into it, um, and we looked, compared the most recently approved filing, or it was a settled filing, but the most recent filing from late, late 2020, compared that to the January 2024 filing, the real driver, the only driver, in fact, of that 42% increase was, the, was, a, was a doubling in the cost of reinsurance. Um, and that is, of course, of course, uh, part of the disruption that's happening in the states. Uh, reinsurers have the flexibility to uh, decide uh, on an annual basis, typically, what they're going to insure and what they uh, what they won't. Um, and that has created a backup, and and of course, has having an impact on policyholders, which again was a catalyst for uh, Representative Schiff to propose the Insure Act, which we read. Um, it's a federal catastrophic reinsurance program as proposed. Um, and the good news we can share is that it doesn't present an imminent threat to the reinsurance industry. Um, even if this were to move forward expeditiously, which uh, probably is debatable, um, the uh, the Insure Act will uh, phase in, as proposed, would phase in over between four and eight years each with each year uh, uh, covering the addition of a new peril. Uh, so for instance, and, and this is one notable piece of information, the Insure Act does propose a discontinuation of the National Flood Insurance Program. Uh, so that would be a, a, a catalyst or a, a um, lead to an increase in the demand for uh, uh, private market products addressing the peril of flood. Subsequent years, different perils, wind, tornado, and so forth, with the eighth year, I'm going from memory, but I believe it's in the eighth year, is earthquake. Uh, so earthquake would become a, uh, a peril subject to this a federal catastrophic reinsurance program. Um, there are a lot of reasons for the challenges, uh, and the reason there aren't too many uh, good examples of a successful federal insurance program covering, at least at least those covering property casualty uh, type of risks. Uh, one of them is this graph that you see on the right-hand side here, which where we've taken expected annual losses uh, from 18 different perils, typically covered uh, uh, by um, property casualty insurers, or at least broadly property-related perils, 18 of them from the National Risk Index, and we've divided by the populations of each state. And the, the reason for including that is simply to show the great diversity in risk across, uh, across the country. Um, and one of the fundamental challenges of a federal, any federal act, is making sure that there's, uh, there's equity in terms of um, what 
people at different with people exposed to, to different levels of risk pay into uh, any um, insurance program. Um, and there you see the, the tremendous uh, diversity. Um, that and other challenges uh, to creating a program. Um, the good news is the language of the bill does specifically call for reinsurance professionals to be involved and in, and uh, in, in, in advise on the structuring of the program. So that's a positive. Um, but we'd submit, and, and we're going to guess that that most uh, most insurance professionals uh, listening to this prefer private market solutions. Um, and and in the immediate term, the uh, the best solution is to simply get more premium into the system. Uh, we're not um, don't mean to uh, to look past the economic challenges that that people have with meeting the rising cost of auto and homeowners insurance. Um, it is real, uh, but still, uh, kind of the you know the um, uh, evidence suggests that there simply needs to be more premium in the system to to meet the growing uh, impact of losses from um, from perils that are, some of which are affected by climate change, some of which may not be. But what is clear is that people have been moving into harm's way as the country becomes more populated and people move to parts of the country where simply bad stuff, wildfires and hailstorms and so forth can and do happen. Um, the medium and longer term solution uh, is for insurers, reinsurers to really redouble their efforts to be seen uh, as part of the solution, not, not necessarily the problem as viewed through the perhaps narrow lens sometimes of, of politicians, uh, but to illustrate that we as an industry are really motivated to help uh, people manage their risks uh, prudently. So that's what we have for you. Plenty more in the briefing. Uh, thanks for listening and uh, do indeed reach out if we can uh, start you on a trial to our work.